hello there and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dana, an occupational therapist with a passion for evidence-based practice and for providing free and valuable resources to fellow therapists, parents, and really anyone who cares about childhood development. Today, I wanna to talk about the difference between sensory strategies and sensory integration. This video is for new therapists out there, parents, or really anyone who wants to learn more. Now, I wanted to make a video on this topic because the world of sensory, you know, has always been extremely nebulous for me personally. And I know it's not just me. I think there's a lot of confusion in our field regarding what does sensory mean? Some therapists, when they refer to providing sensory, uh, they're talking about providing air sensory integration. Other therapists are talking about sensory based strategies. So let's first learn the difference between the two and then let's also see if there's evidence that either of these treatment options work. So first, let's discuss sensory strategies. So sensory strategies are short and provide immediate input to improve behavior or attention in, in that moment or the very near future. Most people use sensory strategies every single day, whether they're aware of it or not. So for example, at night before I go to bed, I often dim the lights and light a candle to calm my body down. If I'm trying to wake up in the morning, I might splash cold water on my face. If I'm feeling restless in the early afternoon, I might go for a run or lift some heavy weights so I can refocus. Us OTs were known for frequently recommending and using sensory strategies with our students. We often recommend movement breaks, using adapted seating options like exercise balls to bounce on or wobble stools to improve focus. Sensory strategies are used throughout the day as needed. Another type of sensory we are known for is something called air sensory integration, ASI, which is completely different, but often conflated with sensory strategies. ASI or sensory integration is a structured therapy approach that uses play-based activities to challenge a child's sensory processing skills in hopes of improving the brain's ability to process and respond to sensory information. While not technically mandatory, many therapists who deliver air sensory integration have specific training and certification in this area. ASI takes place in a specialized clinic with tons of sensory tools at the therapist's disposal. In short, the goal with ASI is big and it's literally to rewire a student's brain so they can better respond to their environment. Okay, so now that we know and understand the difference, let's talk about what works and what doesn't. So the systematic review I'm sharing today is called Effectiveness of Air Sensory Integration and Sensory-Based Interventions for People with Autism Spectrum Disorder a systematic review published in 2015 in the American Journal of Occupational Therapy. The review looked at literature published from January 2006 through April 2013 and reviewed 23 studies that met the inclusion criteria. And just so you know, systematic reviews are comprehensive summaries of all available evidence on a specific research question. And because of this, they're considered to be the highest level of evidence. Here are the key findings. For air sensory integration, the study showed moderate evidence of effectiveness in improving sensory and motor outcomes for individuals with autism. This means that ASI can be a valuable tool in addressing sensory processing difficulties in students with autism. On the other hand, the results for sensory-based interventions or sensory strategies were more mixed. This systematic review showed that single input sensory strategies like using a weighted vest or auditory integration training do not have evidence supporting their efficacy for OT. On the other hand, active participation in multi-sensory interventions can have a meaningful effect on client behavior and performance. Practitioners should consider incorporating these methods into daily routines and home programs when short-term effects are desired. Ultimately, this suggests that while sensory strategies can be beneficial for some individuals, they may not work for everyone or may need to be tailored to each individual's specific needs. In conclusion, sensory strategies and air sensory integration are two very different approaches to addressing sensory processing issues. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful in clarifying the difference between sensory strategies and air sensory integration, as well as understanding the evidence behind these approaches. If you have any questions or would like to see more videos on this topic, please feel free to comment below. And I look forward to seeing you all here next time. Thank you. Bye.